Hey guys, have you ever experienced a piece of media that had a profound impact on your life? Perhaps something like a book that inspired you to climb a mountain, or maybe you saw a movie that inspired you to pursue a career in filmmaking. Well, for me, in 97, yeah, I experienced Final Fantasy VII on the Sony PlayStation. And as a 13-year-old boy with a vivid imagination, this game absolutely shook my world. I spent all of middle school drawing fan art from the characters. At lunchtime, we were talking about the game. And of course, we even had my, we stole my, uh, my parents' video recorder. And we'd kind of play with little toys and reenact scenes from the game. It's what we did as kids. It was before the internet even. In fact, I even think that this game is the single catalyst that even inspired me to pursue a career in art. It wasn't always video game art when I started. But this is where it's led, and I think it's games like Final Fantasy VII that have always kind of resonated with me and motivated me on this particular path. I just think FF7 was the first one that showed me what was possible in the realm of creativity. So this is a little bit more of a personal video today. I want to talk a little bit about my artistic influences, some of my vi favorite video game moments related to art and my development through that. And I'm going to just share part of my journey in that regard. Ah, if that's all too personal for you, you're welcome to stick around and enjoy the time-lapse painting, which is of Rocket Town, one of my favorite locations from Final Fantasy VII. So with that said, uh, let's begin. Now, I played games long before Final Fantasy VII. I grew up playing to the likes of Sonic, Mario, Contra, Streets of Rage, but it wasn't really till the PlayStation 1 era in the mid 90s and when I got a hold of my copy of Final Fantasy 7, it showed me all the possibilities, especially when it comes to the creativity that really could be involved. But I want to keep this focus on FF7 today. It really was a game that showed me how detailed a world could be. And it was really the world of Gaia, the location in FF7 that that made me want to be a world builder. Locations such as the dystopian city of Midgar, to the serene countryside of uh, Nibelheim, and to the majestic northern crater. It really just showcases the game's diverse art direction. It was just the first time I saw environmental designs combine elements of fantasy, science fiction, interlaced with elements of steampunk, uh, you know, inspired imagery, all coexisting with the natural landscapes and the fantastical architecture, something I've today just teaching classes on, and it all kind of stems way, way back to games like Final Fantasy VII. This game's theme, the tone, and the atmosphere of every location reflected the game's eclectic mix of its influences, and it just resulted in a very visually rich and diverse world that feels both familiar and otherworldly. That's a thing I always try to balance with my students when they take my environment design courses is, you know, we don't want to have something that's too far out there that's entirely unrelatable. You know, it can't be too, too alien in many scenarios, but we want enough of these human elements, enough parts of our own history and culture to interweave into the design. And that makes it something that resonates with the audiences. And for me, this is what Final Fantasy VII did very well. Now, artistically, with my earlier days, you know, with my art history, starting from about middle school, again, when I got this game, I used to spend a lot of my time, like I mentioned, smothering my mother's refrigerator with fan arts. And I was just so just taken back what is actually possible with the video games medium. Uh, when I was in high school, you know, in like 2000, I didn't even know that this was a career path. And I think that was like the biggest thing really that was holding me back ever is that I just didn't know it was a job even though I physically had it and played it you know as a game I just didn't I, I knew it came from Japan I just didn't think it was something that I could ever achieve to kind of reach to realistically you know living in the states there wasn't art talks online and conventions like GDC YouTube wasn't available and the making of videos were actually very rare so this just wasn't even on my radar of possibilities. So I just found myself in a, in a particularly weird kind of place attending a conventional art school, or, you know, right out of high school, 
and just learning fine arts when in reality all I wanted to do was design and come up with ideas and locations for video games, right? Like that would be like the dream job for like you know, 20 year old Tyler. But even though my young naive self, you know, just had trouble justifying what I was doing at the moment, I'm really glad that I stuck it out and learned a lot of these art fundamentals in a very kind of conventional manner and setting. I did think it served me well to learn oil painting and to, to use watercolors and to draw with charcoal. It really helped build my artistic experience and it made me overall, as I think as a person, much more well-rounded. However, right after graduation, you know, a lot of things didn't change, right? I was still living, you know, with my parents. I was still playing a lot of video games, of course, and I was still talking about them a lot. And I was grinding out the craft, you know, just following whatever tutorial I could. I was working various day jobs. I was taking classes at local art museums and fantasy art just to, you know, anything I could get my hands on in terms of like content that could help me, you know, progress uh, as a creator. And I think it's the fact that Final Fantasy VII did come, being a product from Japan, right, from a company at the time called Squaresoft, everything just felt so foreign and exotic to me. And I think just soaking up so much of that as, as a young person that really couldn't afford to travel, it was a way for me to kind of get a lot of culture, you know, just experiencing the stories and, and the visuals of these video games. And at that time, you know, 20 years ago now, uh, the JRPGs is what they're called, right? Like, uh, you know, Japanese RPGs. They were, they were around, but they're not nearly as common and the market simply wasn't as saturated with them as it is today, you know, in 2020. Like, I got like 300 of these kinds of games on the Switch alone. They come out all the time. It, there'll be like a one or two, maybe a year that were like really, really good that would come out back then. And I'd make sure to just soak them up and play and replay them as many times as I could. Like when I sat there as a, as a young man and I would open up, you know, the jewel, the CD jewel case and I see like this beautiful airship like background, you know, splashed across the back like that with one of the main characters standing there. I, I can't express enough how transformative that was for me. And I'd spend, you know, countless evenings reading and rereading like the full color manual you know that got into the backstories and some of the lore and the settings you know of these industrialized cities and again those those vast countrysides I, I just soaked it all up I mean before a game like Final Fantasy 7 everything was just pixelated so like it it was there there was just more room for interpretation and of course we would use our imagination and we just had to engage with it on a different level, right? With our with our imagination, since not everything was perfectly kind of rendered out and, and used various types of 3D models to represent the space in the game world. Looking back now, of course, the, that the, those 90s were considered the golden era, the one of the golden ages of this type of uh, video game. And, you know, it's just things like Xenogears, you know, Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, uh, the Grandia games, which later on, funny enough, I had a, a chance to work with one of the, the studios that, that you know, kind of produced that. And we worked on, again, yet another game that, that a, a planned sequel that just never kind of came into fruition, unfortunately. But that that was a dream, even though it didn't come out, that I got to work on these types of games for these studios that were located overseas. And that's what's amazing about the market, right? The global market nowadays is that it yeah in a way we're all in competition with each other but like you can work anywhere almost at any time with a vast variety of people right it's they're all creative people coming together with a common goal and i just think that is just one of the most coolest things ever love these games and they inspire me in my creative work all the time and i just think it's absolutely amazing how mainstream gaming really has become because when i was younger you know, we keep playing video games a secret. You know, we were nerds and, and that was like a socially bad thing. And we would keep to ourselves about this. Not a lot of people did it. Just a few, you know, small social cliques within high school, you know, enjoys games. And the medium has grown and the art has grown with them as well. New tools, right? Like like 3D and, and VR and digital art in general now make creating worlds for these games even even more accessible, which is what's awesome. 
and it's it's taking the field and the and the genres you know within games to new limits that I never thought would have been possible. Every time a new generation of games comes along, well, not so much anymore. Like I used to say, how is this possible? How does it get any better than this? Like I remember playing, you know, Final Fantasy VII on my old CRT TV, and just I could not get out of the headspace of like, how do how can games possibly look any better than this? You know, and it was it was just an, a remarkable time, uh, you know, to be alive. We'd like I felt like uh, the whole world in front of me. You know, I started off even just as like a painter, right? As a traditional artist. And I think it's awesome. Like if I get something like a, the Quest, right? The VR, and I can tap into like doing digital 3D sculpting. It unlocks whole new tiers of like how I can express myself creatively. And I can build new things that I can't draw or that I can't paint. And I can combine all these uh, techniques to build such wondrous things. I mean, they are all not wonderful. Sometimes they don't work out, but I don't, I don't talk about those all the time. And nowadays, right, you hear more of terms like frame per second, resolution, animation cycles. But, you know, when I was a lad, there was just a more abstract sense of games and art. And I really like this, right? Nowadays, games can render insane amounts of details at long draw distances, all while having dynamic weather systems. Right? Have any of you guys ever played Red Dead 2? They look superb, but I do love at the same time that the simpler games, even more modern pixel games like Sea of Stars. Has anyone tried that one? Uh, they still leave a little bit to the imagination. And that's what I try to do with my art as well. And that's why I've kind of steered away personally from creating more hyper-realistic and, and cinematic detailed shots. Like you'd see something... From like Naughty Dog from The Last of Us. I, I just like having like a little bit more expressionistic approach with, with paint, because I come from a painting background, and I like to leave a little bit in my work for the viewer's imagination. It's my way of interacting with the viewer, and that's always served me well. But again, I see people on the other side of that line, painting pixel-perfect imagery in every respect, and you know they're doing wonderful. So it, again, that's what's beautiful about today's society in the art market as well as like there is something for everybody but for like games like ff7 even though at the time it was a cutting edge games it still really had abstract parts to it right like these games had overworlds which felt so massive but they were they're actually quite simple like right you take 10 steps in the game and it, that would represent you like traveling on foot as the characters for days and and as a kid my head would just you know expand upon that in, in my imagination i'd wonder like what were they doing what were they seeing along this road and this path even though it look, kind of looked like a little bit of a line you know playing it in the game but yeah art as a craft overall it's, it's just evolved so far in the last 15 to 20 years and it's paralleled with the advancements in these games. And, and nowadays, of course, right, more complex games require a higher level of art. Uh, and I do appreciate, as I said, games ranging from Zelda and, and to The Last of Us. And I found it personally best that having multiple forms of contrasting art styles in your portfolio can be a bit more detrimental to a younger artist. It doesn't matter so much if you've been in the industry forever and you have a reputation behind you, but I, I think if you're a student artist, you should definitely kind of find your niche and focus just a bit more by before diversifying stylistically because it confuses potential employers if you're an unproven. And if it's anything I've learned in a creative field is that when you confuse, you'll lose. I love art and the video games medium. And honestly, sometimes it's something I take for granted, even though I'm very blessed to make it as a living. It's simply just a miracle that any game actually ships, you know, and, and goes through the whole development process from beginning to end. I've worked on several dozens of titles that never have gone beyond the conceptual stage, and it's unfortunate a lot of my art will be lost with that, helping studios develop their ideas. There are so many moving pieces that involve such a large number of collaborations between artists, designers, programmers, musicians, and then the business side of it as well. Yesterday I was, of course, inspired by the OG FF7 
Today I'm presenting an interpretation of one of the game's locations, Rocket Town. Tomorrow I will certainly be inspired by, you know, playing more of the upcoming Rebirth, you know, on the PS5. Can't wait to do that and see what kind of creativity comes out of myself from that experience. But guys, I want to know from you at this point. Let me know in the comments below if, if you have experienced a favorite game film or movie that has absolutely set you on a path doesn't necessarily need to be even in a creative way but something that's deeply resonated with you enough that it's motivated you to do something beyond what you normally do or thought was possible and even though ai has been a hot topic in both video games and with art the past year i'm not going to let it affect my creativity using it may lead to faster and cheaper production but I think an overabundance of this homogenized sort of content will never have the lasting appeal of art and designs created by actual humans. So do me a favor, guys. Don't stop creating. And don't stop supporting content built by humans. Thank you, of course, for watching. Do subscribe for more. And for now, I'm going to get back to playing some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a moment to let you know if you are a creator or an art student over at Brush Sauce Academy, we have many options from you, ranging from the very cheap and affordable Patreon, which gets you access to over 300 video pieces of content and the exclusive Discord community. If you wanna get more serious and accelerate that, we also have group and one-on-one -on -one mentorships available. I personally hire industry-leading professionals to help you guys boost your career, and implement the skills that you need to thrive. Links below for everything.